In this exercise, we're going to see how the properties of reflection, gloss, and shine interact with a light source inside of Photoshop. I've saved my progress as softershadows.psd, found inside the 15 lighting folder, and I've gone ahead and let the ray tracing process complete a little bit. So you can see how that noise is now being rendered out as soft transitions. All right, at this point, I'm going to switch back to my full 3D scene. And with scene selected here at the top of the list, I'm going to change quality from ray trace draft back to interactive painting for just a moment so that I can make a modification to one of the materials in my group here. And I'm going to select both walls. And the idea is I'm going to turn the walls into mirrors. Now, you're not going to find floor to ceiling wall mirrors in your typical everyday average hotel room, in large part because it would be a nightmare to clean them. But also, I'm not sure most guests would appreciate those kinds of mirrors. But it's going to serve us very well inside the scene. We're going to get an impression of how light works inside of a 3D scene in Photoshop. So I'm going to go ahead and change, first of all, the diffuse color by clicking on this little color swatch right there. And let's dial in the hue value of 15 degrees, the saturation value of 20%. And I'm going to take the brightness of the walls down to 75% and click OK. So that we have these fairly dim sort of reddish walls. And just to make sure that I don't have any diffuse texture in the way that the texture isn't overriding the color, I'm going to click on this little page icon and choose Remove Texture to get rid of that diffuse texture. And now I'm going to drop down to Reflection, and I'm going to crank that guy up to 75%, which is roughly turning these walls into absolute mirrors. Now, we can't tell because we're working in the interactive mode, so I'll have to click on Scene once again at the top of the list. And I'll change the quality setting from interactive to ray trace draft. And we'll begin to render out the reflections inside of the scene. And you can now see both of the windows reflected on this left hand wall, which is kind of nice. You can see the bedspread reflected. You can see the lampshade and the end table. Notice what you don't see reflected. You don't see the light itself. So not only are we not seeing the light inside of the scene, we're not seeing the light reflected either. What in the world gives? Well, in order to see a hot spot, in order to see the light itself reflected on the scene, you need gloss. So I'm going to go ahead and click inside the image window in order to interrupt the ray trace. And I'm going to click on both walls again, that material that defines these two walls. And I'm going to change the gloss value from 0% to 100%. And then press the Enter key or the Return key on the Mac, and we'll see the scene re-render. And now we have an enormous hot spot that's associated with that light bulb. All right, that's too diffused in my opinion. In other words, it's indistinct. And to make that bulb more distinct, then you need to increase the shine value. So I'm going to click again to interrupt the ray trace, and I'm going to change that shine value to 50%, and we'll get a much more isolated reflection there inside of the wall. Now, we're still not seeing the bulb, and I'm not going to make the bulb visible once again. In the world of 3D inside of Photoshop, you would have to create some sort of synthetic 2D effect. I'm not too worried about that, but I would like to go ahead and capture some of that light inside of the lampshade. So I'm going to click again to interrupt the ray trace, and we're going to make a few modifications to that material that's called lampshade here inside the list. So I'm going to scroll down. There it is. I'll click on it, and we'll see that I have this blue diffuse texture this time around. And if I'm concerned at all, I could get rid of any diffuse texture that might be associated with this scene by choosing Remove Texture from that little page icon. Press the Escape key once again to interrupt the ray tracing process. And there's a couple of values I want to modify here. First of all, I'm going to change the gloss value to 100%. Press the Enter key or the Return key on the Mac. Photoshop starts ray tracing. I click in order to interrupt that ray tracing. Sometimes you have to kind of click and hold in order to get Photoshop's attention. Then I'm going to increase the shine value so that we have a more isolated effect. I'll take that up to 25%. Click again to interrupt the ray trace. And now I'm going to change the color of the specular highlight by clicking on the swatch to the right of the word specular. And I'm going to increase the brightness value to 100%. And what I'm saying is that this hot spot can be as bright as absolute white. And then I'll click OK in order to accept that change. And now I'll let the ray trace happen here on screen. Now, we're still not getting a brilliant light inside of the lampshade. We have this kind of band of darkness right there. But I like the effect. I'm not sure why it's happening. I think it's actually the bulb shape that's casting the shadow. But what I like about it is it creates this kind of burnt effect across the center of the lampshade. And it does come off as being pretty darn natural. All right, anyway, you get a sense of what's going on here. I'm going to go ahead and click again to interrupt that ray trace. 
That's how you work with the properties of reflect, gloss, and shine in order to capture a light source on a material. In the next exercise, we're going to swap out the materials for the bedspread and floor.